Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to look at the secret hidden buffs that units and buildings receive automatically when you advance to the next age. We all know the obvious power spikes when aging up, like Castle Age giving additional town centers for booming and powerful units like Knights and Mangonels, while Imperial Age gives trebuchets as a serious threat to castles. Unlocking more of the tech tree is important, but what about the hidden stat buffs that aren't as obvious? Especially when you first learn about Dark vs Feudal Age Scout Cavalry, which has a dramatic stat change, I think it's natural to wonder what other similar things are lurking in the game's code. So in this video, we're going to look at what I believe is a fully comprehensive list of similar sorts of changes. As the poster child and inspiration for this video though, let's begin with the Scout Cavalry, which basically turns into a brand new unit the instant you reach Feudal. To start with, the Scout Cavalry's line of sight increases by 2 in each direction, which doesn't sound like a lot, but technically more than doubles how many tiles are revealed at any one moment. They also speed up by about 30%, altogether meaning they uncover the map about twice as fast as they did in Dark Age. While ideally that should come too late to help find your initial resources, it definitely helps explore your opponent's base once you hit Feudal, and explains why it feels so much easier to run into enemy town centers during Dark Age. Maybe less well known, this continues in Castle and Imperial, adding another two sight each time. Naturally, that extra vision is also retained when upgrading to Light Cavalry or Hazar as well. Now, arguably an even more impactful change is to their attack. Scout Cavalry and Dark Age deal 3 damage, which means a villager armored up with Loom can beat a scout one on one. You can still harass villagers and be annoying, but you don't want to stand around and let a fight play out as shown here. That dynamic reverses though the second you hit Feudal Age, where scouts gain plus 2 attack. That's a bigger deal than it sounds, as you can start engaging isolated builders, and potentially even kill them, leaving your opponent not just down a villager, but also with a half-finished military building or an incomplete wall. So that's the Scout Cavalry, and something similar but not identical happens with the Gurjar's Camel Scout. First, they receive the same line of sight boost, matching the regular Scout Cavalry in Feudal Age, though on the flip side this is just a one-time effect, and doesn't increase further in Castle and Imperial. They also speed up like Light Cavalry, though in this case it's only a 21% increase instead of 30. They also receive a similar plus 2 attack, though their stats are a little different than the Scout Cavalry and tilt more toward HP than damage. The implication is the same though, where in Dark Age they lose to a villager with Loom, but after the passive boost in Feudal they can win that fight and become a legitimate threat to pick off a villager, though their lower attack means it takes them a little longer to do it. Feudal Age is also when their bonus damage against cavalry, camels, and ships kicks in, as obviously having plus 5 in Dark Age would make them way too good against Scout Cavalry, so there's a 1 age secret delay to that bonus damage. Maybe most significant though is their benefit to reaching Castle Age, where they instantly upgrade to regular camel riders with much better stats overall and also a faster training time on top of that. And finally, to complete the scouts, the Eagle Scout naturally has its own set of hidden upgrades. First off, upon reaching Feudal Age, the Eagle Scout adds 3 line of sight in each direction. Unlike the other scouts, they don't gain any new attack in Feudal, but already started with more to begin with, so it all evens out. Instead, it's the Castle Age where they get their important set of hidden improvements. First, they gain an instant plus 3 attack, and on top of that unlock their hidden bonus damage against Camels and Cavalry. Their creation time at the barracks is also automatically brought down from 60 seconds to 35, and if you ever thought eagles were hard to mass in Feudal Age and felt easier and more effective in Castle, now you know why, and it makes an important distinction between Feudal and Castle Eagles for American civilizations. Remember, this is all happening passively, and doesn't require the Eagle Warrior upgrade, which instead targets HP, Pierce Armor, and Speed, but you have to pay for it. The faster creation time in particular has a similar feeling to the crossbow upgrade, secretly cutting that unit line's creation time from 35 to 27, or similarly for the war galley upgrade, nearly trimming that line's creation time in half. For how important they are, it's very easy to overlook the creation speed element of these upgrades, and highlights one reason you don't want to get stuck in Feudal for any longer than necessary when trying to mass any of these three units. Getting away from these scout units now, another hidden change you probably wouldn't know if you just picked up the game with Definitive Edition is all infantry gain plus 2 line of sight in Feudal Age. This used to be a separate tech called Tracking, and cost 75 and later just 50 food, but is now given instantly to all civilizations when they hit Feudal. You may have noticed this before with Militia, where if you haven't hit Feudal Age yet, you find yourself stumbling around your opponent's base and walking into Town Center Fire, but suddenly in Feudal Age you get a much better sense of what's going on around you. No promises you won't still walk into Town Center Fire, but the fact each unit suddenly reveals twice as many tiles at least takes away some of your excuse. 
but speaking of infantry, there's a particularly interesting one for our purposes here, which changes more than maybe any other unit as a direct result of reaching the next stage, and that's the sergeant. Again, it would be possible to not even notice in casual play, but their stats improve dramatically when you reach castle age, adding an instant 50% to their HP, 3 more attack, and plus 1 plus 1 armor, along with a secret 33% faster creation speed. The obvious reason for this was to make a feudal dungeon rush not completely overwhelming, while also not leaving you with something useless in Castle Age at the same time. So the decision was made to basically make it two different units, depending on the age you're in. Now, those are all the hidden changes that I know of for units, but it turns out buildings have their own set of secret improvements each time you advance. We all know aging up makes buildings look different, but did you know it generally also makes them more difficult to destroy? The general rule for most buildings is that they begin with 0 melee armor and 7 pierce armor, and each of these increase by 1 every time you age up. That armor is not removed by the obu, by the way, though I'd say it's mostly ranged units that run into problems with this. In addition to this, depending on the building, their HP also scales to some extent, here showing what their HP is or would be in all 4 ages if you were able to build it or if you started with it on Mega Random for instance. Right away, you can see houses and economic buildings receive a large benefit when hitting feudal and castle age, while military buildings experience the largest increase overall by imperial. Obviously, you can throw masonry and architecture in here, and for Byzantines, their building HP bonus stacks on top of these changes, meaning their buildings get tougher faster than you might expect by looking at the bonus alone. A Byzantine barracks in Imperial Age, for example, doesn't have 30% more HP than one in Dark Age, it has over 100% more. Personally, I find it interesting they decided to give buildings staggered HP at all, as that's certainly not a design necessity. Age of Empires 4, for example, has static HP on buildings when advancing, and even within Age of Empires 2, certain buildings like town centers and castles don't increase their HP automatically. They're kind of the exceptions here though, as generally defensive buildings do get tougher when aging up. Palisade walls, for example, jump from 150 to 250 HP when you hit feudal and stone walls and gates do this even more dramatically when hitting castle age. Similarly, tower HP also increases in castle age, though in this case that's actually because their feudal HP was dropped in definitive edition to tone down tower rushing. Even outposts sort of get in on the action, with plus 2 line of sight each time you age up, same as the scout cavalry. All in all, especially reaching the castle age gives a lot of surprise defensive benefits, and even the case of the town center, which doesn't get a direct HP improvement, they still gain additional armor. So those are the general hidden improvements, though for the sake of completeness, I thought we'd run through a list of the civilization ones as well. While this wasn't the initial focus of the video, when I started to think about it, it's amazing how many civilizations have bonuses linked to reaching the next age in one way or another. When you really lay it out like this, advancing to the next age is pretty clearly giving you more than just an expanded tech tree. Whether it be for scouts, buildings, or something civilization linked, advancing to the next age always has something else going on behind the scenes to help you out and give an immediate and passive benefit. That'll do it for this one though. Big thanks to Seb, James, Jockster, Justin, Kyle, Samantha, Steven, Woodruff, and everyone else on Patreon for their amazing support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.